Right now, you and I are gonna talk about the top three baits I think you should be using in March to catch giant bass. But before we get started, I should say, this is the video I enjoy making the most every month. This is the one I have the most fun researching, asking people questions, asking pros the questions on what baits they should use. And if you like this kind of content, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and the family. So we're gonna break this down in three sections and each section will have three lures, the upper, middle, and then the lower southern states. And in this month, the upper and the middle are going to be the same because there's a lot of places that still do not have open water. But if you have open water, the baits that we're gonna talk about are gonna help you catch fish. Now, March is a month that it's really a pre-spawn month for a majority of the country. Down here in Florida, we've already had our spawn, but we're gonna have a spawn of bluegill and other shad forage fish that's gonna start happening. So we're gonna look at that and then target that bait to use throughout our fishing in March. And while there'll be some similarities from last month's video, the video from February, a lot of the baits will still work in March. The jerk bait being the biggest one. A jerk bait's gonna work during all cold water applications. And with the right cadence and the right retrieval, you're gonna catch a lot of fish with that bait. So while the jerk bait isn't on the list for this month, it really is on the list right now. Before we get into the three baits, you need to recognize what's happening with the bass. The bass are moving up. They've had a lot of colder weather. They've become a little bit more lethargic. The water is starting to warm up slightly, which makes their digestive system work a little bit faster. They will start to eat more right now, but they're gonna go from being in a different column of water than they were a month, a month and a half ago. And while these baits are moving up, there's certain areas you need to target such as lily pads. They might stage just outside of the lily pads, waiting to push a little bit further in to find that bed or that mate. So if you don't see them on beds or on that flat, you might look out in that two to three foot range where they will stage themselves to get ready to spawn fairly soon. And you should target those fish moving up moving up also in the water column, but moving up into the shallow water. This is a great time of the season to get those bites that are easy to, not easy to get, but you're able to see them, you're able to hunt them, you're able to stalk them. Because everyone enjoys flipping and pitching into a bed and catching that giant bass. And as our weather starts to get a little bit better, these fish are gonna move up and move in. So remember that. Finding them out deep can happen. Finding them on structure will happen. But these fish have a goal in mind. They've had a long time of colder weather and they want to put that fat back on. They also want to find a mate. So as they're not going to be as deep as you normally will get them. When you have a cold water year round, yes, they're going to stay deep and you can get them drop shotting or whatever it is. But right now is when fish are going to move inward. So if you're in the upper and the middle of the country, my first bait I think you should be using is a great chatterbait. And there really isn't anything better in my opinion than the jackhammer from Z-Man. The jackhammer is gonna do several things that is really important. First, it's gonna stimulate that lateral line on the bass. They'll also feel it, hear it, and go after it. Now they're not gonna chase it down from a long way. So you wanna cast that bait and keep it as on that bank as much as possible. It needs to look like a fleeing bluegill that has just a ton of vibration. That vibration and action and all the other things that make the jackhammer amazing will help you catch lots of fish in March. My second bait is a bait I think everyone would tell you to use. A shallow water crankbait is very important right now because it kind of matches the hatch of what is happening. You're gonna have a shad spawn and a bluegill spawn and a lot of forage fish are spawning right now. Now, I don't think you should have a giant crankbait. I think you should get a smaller, shallow running crankbait and try to keep it in that upper water column because that's what the fish are looking at. They're trying to find something that looks a little out of place and then go after and eat it. So my second bait is a shallow running crankbait and you could use anything like uh, the one from Ot Defoe or a Sixth Sense one. There's 
a ton of them, but try to get one in that one to two foot depth range that runs. And my third bait for the upper and the central middle of the country is a swim bait. And I actually think that this is a time that you can use whatever size swim bait you really want. For me personally, I always go with smaller swim baits because I feel more confident with it. But I'll be honest, right now in March, I'm gonna throw that dangerous Bass Mafia swim bait a lot because it has exceptional action. I can run it slow and it can it works. It doesn't blow out. And I can keep it in that upper water column by just keeping my rod tip higher. And I want that bait to just swim slowly through grass or whatever I have and swim on the edges of the grass and wait for those big bass to ambush it. Middle of the country, if you can find good grass, you need to fish it. You really, really need to fish it. It's crucial this time of year when the get grass is starting to grow, starting to, or, or even made it through the, the winter, that those fish will be following that grass. And so will the, the forage fish. So find the grass and find the fish. But those are the three baits I think you should use up north and in the middle of the country. Now down here in the south, I have no idea why I did that. I don't, well, I think I'm Sammy Sosa out of nowhere. I am using, to start off, I'm gonna use the Buka Baby Bull Shad. I generally don't go with name brands when I do these videos, but in this case, the, ba the Baby Bull Shad is exceptional right now. We are having, we will be having a bluegill spawn in March, beginning, end of March, in that April-ish. And sometimes they're early and sometimes they're late. But that baby bull shad from Buka can, first off, swims spectacularly. But you can also keep it in the upper water column or in the middle of the water column by just the way you bring it in. It's also another bait that doesn't blow out at high speeds. But I'm not running it at high speeds. I'm going to make a really long cast and I'm going to make a methodical swim back. I'm not giving it any twitches. I'm really not doing anything. The only thing I'm trying not to do is to get a ton of grass on it. But the Buka Baby Bull Shad right now is absolutely spectacular in March. My second bait I'm going to use quite a bit down here and in the southern states. I'm going to use a jig with some sort of creature bait as a trailer, a flappy tail, whatever it is. I might put the, the grunt on from Thunderhawk because I'm looking at a box from them. Or I might put that new engage water bull on. Or I'm just going to use any sort of swim bait that also has is weed that can be weedless for me i will put a spicy beaver on i will put anything that i think is going to help me make that bait look a little more bulky as it's floating downward but also have some sort of flapper kicker tail that's going to go back and forth to stimulate the bass as it flutters down i will just make pitches and casts and either if i'm flipping it into garbage or whatever it is i'm just going to shake it get it out of there and cast it another spot. Or I'm gonna make a long cast and let that bait just bounce off the bottom. Give it little twitches, not drastic twitches, just twitches so that bait pops and does this. You don't want it to be 10 inch pops, you want it to be small pops and bounce it off the bottom of the seafloor. That will attract bass because they'll see the puff of the dirt, but they'll also feel the vibration from those kicker tails. So my second bait is a jig with a nice creature trailer bait. And my third one is gonna be new because I've done this video for two consecutive years. But in March, the bait, another bait I think you should be using is a double Colorado bladed spinner bait. Now why double? It gives you a little bit more thumping action. I'm not really looking for the flash quite yet. I want that bait to attract fish because of the blades. Now that will get some flash because the blades are there, but I'm gonna use something that's a little bit of on the smaller range for a spinner bait. But this is a great time to match what we're gonna see happening in this month with the bluegill spawn and shad spawn and all that other things that are gonna be happening. A spinner bait kind of mimics all of it. And quite honestly, I don't think you can ever go wrong with a spinnerbait. But in March, I'm going to start using the spinnerbait at a 
moderately slow speed to keep that wheel of those blades just to keep them spinning. And I'm going to really run it through everything. I'm going to run it through grass. I'm going to bounce it off sticks, stumps, docks, whatever I can do. I prefer to have something in the water that I can bounce those blades off of or that bait off of. I actually want the bait to hit it at a reasonable speed so that when it hits it, the blades have a different reaction for just a millisecond. Either it'll fall down a little bit, it'll feel like you are getting a bite, but if you, it, once you feel what it really starts to feel like, you won't start to set the hook as much. But I want those blades to out of nowhere make a erupt change in the direction that they're working because that will attract the bass to find it and seek it out. So a spinner bait's my third bait to use in March down here in the southern states of, of the great United States of America. So what do you think? What are the three baits you're gonna use this month? I'd love to know, just put them in the comments below because I will use it for next year. Again, I really do appreciate you guys watching these videos because this is, this is the most fun video I do every month. It really is, I really enjoy this. I love learning about places that I don't know how to fish and finding out more about them. So if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. Make sure you take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.